How many of you have seen the movie War Room? So we still only have a few people. I really want to encourage you. Rent it, stream it, whatever. Watch this movie. It's not a corny Christian movie. It's pretty powerful. And these guys, this director, both of them, the Kenny Brothers, are very good. Anyway, the scenario is you have an older lady who's a widow. It is a solid prayer warrior. She loves to pray, just works with people, and watches God do things. And there's a couple right here that their family is in trouble, their marriage is in trouble. Okay? And what we've done is we've walked through some of the things that they've gone through in their marriage. She's a real estate agent actually trying to sell her home. And so that's how these two meet. But it turns out that it wasn't just about real estate, it was about her praying and teaching this young woman here about the things that she needs to do and about what her husband needs to do. So, so far we've covered about being lukewarm. You know, being a lukewarm Christian is not a good thing. It's where you kind of have like one foot here and one foot here. One foot in the world and doing all the stuff that everybody says is cool, and the other is doing what God wants you to do. Now, that doesn't mean that all of a sudden you've got to wear, you know, a button-up shirt and you're going to be like this and don't breathe because you're a Christian. If anything, it's the opposite. There's freedom in being a Christian. You get to be a radical person that people want to follow. Think about it. I was reminiscing with my son because, you know, he, he wasn't obviously born then, but 1980, I guess it was 84, 85, when Michael Jackson came out with Thriller, he had a Thriller out. And I'm saying how dating myself. When he did that, um, I don't I don't remember anybody who didn't have it. And all of a sudden people started moonwalking. They started doing this thing with their feet, moving back and all that, and that became popular. Then you had, you know, where people started like wearing the Michael Jackson look-alike pleather kind of come on, help me out guys. Yeah, right? And and you know, and, and everybody started wearing this. It took one person though to say you need to wear this. And that was Michael Jackson, right? So people followed him because they liked his music, but then they followed what he was doing, and he made an impact. Being lukewarm is kind of like, well, I'll just kind of do what everybody else has done. And that's not what God calls us to do, because all of us are meant to be uh, individual and separate. Accountability, we talked about, are, do you understand that, or do we understand the accountability we have to God and the accountability that we have to one another? And we talked about that. Okay. This week, we're, we're in uh, week three, and um, the title of this sermon is called Paid in Full. Isn't that a beautiful thing? Look at that. You guys, like, when you've seen that sticker, doesn't it make you feel good? Yeah. It's kind of cool, isn't it? It's like, Paid in full. Now this is this is a copy of somebody's mortgage, which I hope that I mean it's broadcast so we can probably put an X through the uh, case number. But that was on Google. And somebody took a picture of it to say, hey, this thing's paid in full and it's the original and it's a mortgage. Um, because many people never get to that spot in their life now because mortgages are so expensive anymore and it takes a lifetime to ever pay them off. But when you, when you have something like that standing before you that says paid in full, it feels pretty good, right? It feels pretty good knowing that the bill is paid. If you go to a restaurant and you go to get something to eat, and all of a sudden somebody from out of nowhere says, the waiter comes and says, listen, your bill's been paid for. And you're like, who did that? And you find out, you look over, and it's a friend or somebody that you were kind of familiar with, and they just happen to be there. And then they wave at you, you know? Yeah, I mean, it's kind of cool, isn't it? It's like an unexpected thing. Well, when we look at grace, and we look at um, what this means about pain in full, today we're going to be talking about something that I don't want it to make it sound like doom and gloom, because that's not the way it's intended to be. But we do have to take in consideration where our standing is with God. And do we understand something called grace? And when I flip over here, let's see if we got this one off. Okay, this is the clip from the movie that you're going to see. You pause it just a second. This to set up the scenario. Okay. Remember, 
she's a real estate agent. This is Miss Clara. Miss Clara, they're talking about business, but Miss Clara's interest is not in business. She's interested in her spirit. All right. So they've been talking. They've been having these conversations. We've seen the videos week to week, right? So now what you're seeing is you're going to see a conversation is going to go on, and she's going to talk to her about grace. Actually, I'm not lonely. My question to you is this. In light of all these walls, does God still love Tony? We both know he does. Do you? No, Miss Clara, you're meddling. <laughs> There's love in my heart for Tony, but it's just buried under a lot of frustration. So he needs grace. Grace? I don't know that he deserves grace. Do you deserve grace? <coughs> Miss Clara, you have a habit of backing me up in a corner and making me squirm. I feel the same way. <laughs> but the question still remains, do you deserve grace? The Bible says that no one is righteous, not even one, for we have all sinned. So really none of us deserves grace. But we all still want God's forgiveness. Elizabeth, it comes down to this. Jesus shed his blood on the cross. He died for you, even when you did not deserve it. And it rose from the grave and offers forgiveness and salvation for anyone who turns to him. But the Bible also says that we can't ask him to forgive us while refusing to forgive us. I know, Miss Clara, but that's just so hard to do. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. But that's where grace comes in. He gives us grace. And he helps us to give it to others, even when they don't deserve it. We all deserve judgment. And that is what all God gives us when we don't repent and believe in his son. I had to forgive Leo for something. And it wasn't easy, but it freed me. Elizabeth, there's not room for you and God on the front of your heart. It's either him or it's you. You need to step down. Now, if you want victory, you're going to have to first surrender. Oh, Miss Clara, do I just back off and choose to forgive and then just let him walk all over me? God is a good defense attorney. Trust it to him. And then you can turn your focus to the real enemy. The real enemy? The one that wants to remain in it. The one that wants to distract you and deceive you and divide you from the Lord and your husband. You see, that's how it works. Satan comes to steal, kill, and destroy. And he is stealing your joy. He is killing your faith. And he's trying to destroy your faith. If I were you, I would get my heart right with God. And you need to do your fight in prayer. And you need to kick the real enemy out of your home with the word of God. It's time for you to fight a little bit. It's time for you to fight for your family. It's time for you to fight the real enemy. It's time for you to take off the gloves and do it. Power for it. Yeah. Some of her quotes, Ms. Clara says, He gives us grace and He helps us to give it to others, even when they don't deserve it. We all deserve judgment, but that is what a holy God gives us when we don't repent and believe in His Son. Elizabeth, there's not room for you and God on the throne of your heart. It's either Him or it's you. You need to step down. If you want victory, you have to surrender. And also, you need to do your, your fighting in prayer. And like I said, the movie's powerful. And, um, yeah, it's kind of like this middle one. I love this. It's either him or it's you. I, I just fired me last week. Because I started thinking that I was the one that, yeah, I, mean, I just said enough already. 
But when we look at grace, here's a few questions to consider. Who has extended great grace to you in the past? Who has taught you a great deal about how to walk in grace? What have you learned from them? Have you had difficulty in your life forgiving those who have wronged you? That last question is strong. See, if you've had a credit card statement, you've heard of a grace period, right? If you owed somebody something, even if it's a you know the internet bill or a TV bill or something or a phone bill, and they say there's a five day grace period, that means when the bill is due, that's when it's due. But you have five extra days to pay it, just in case you forgot just in case the money wasn't there, we're going to give you five extra days to pay it. Then after that, we're going to start really tacking on charges, right? The same thing goes with our life. The same thing goes with our life. That if we, when our bill comes due, we're not going to be able to pay it. See, I, I had lunch with somebody last week that kind of believes in a different belief system than we do with Christianity and has... You went to our Sunday school at one time, many years ago. And we talked about those type of things. And it was a real honest conversation. But at the very end of it, he said, you know, what if I'm wrong? That's what he said to me. He said, what if he's wrong? He says, then I guess there's a, there's a, a holy God that's going to judge me. He said, but I'll find a way out of hell. I couldn't say anything past that other than, okay, because it doesn't matter what I said at that point. I'm only going to be fighting something that until the eyes are opened, until things come through God himself revealing himself, there are certain things that you just got to say, okay, you, you, it, came, it came out of your mouth. <laughs> You know, you know where I stand. I'm not here to convince you of it. I'm here to present the case and love on you. But you got to make the choice. The sad part is, many people don't. They go to church or they don't even go to church and they don't realize that God has grace on them because they hear so much judgment and they hear so much condemnation that they think that they can't possibly have favor with a loving God. And some days I get into that, guys. Some days where I start looking at myself going, oh my goodness, why does he keep me around? Why does he bother keep me around? And I mean, I was even looking at the dogs this morning. They're all coming up to me like, you know, hey dad, you want to feed me? You know? I'm like, man. I said, you know, I've, I've got an amazing family. I've got an amazing church family. I'm a blessed man. But I'm a whiner. And if the Wi-Fi goes down, that's a problem. You know, I'm just saying, you know? And, and, you know, I just, I just wonder sometimes, like, you know, if he's sitting up there just going, does he not get it? Does he not get it? But his grace is so amazing because on every day and every time that I blow it, God covers it. That doesn't give me a right to do it. But it also lets me know that in his grace is the only way that I'm going to have it paid in full. The same applies for all of us here. Maybe you've been to other churches or you've had experiences in your life and people have condemned you. You have to find out what God says in his word about it. And I'm going to get to some good parts here momentarily, okay? I love this little sign, I forgive you, God. <laughs> it's pretty cool. So the question is, am I a lawbreaker? There are 613 laws that were given to the nation of Israel. And of course, the Ten Commandments were the, the you know the theme or most important. I love this. See the first four right here deal with God, our relationship with God. The rest of them here deal with man. If you look at the sign of the cross, you got what? Vertical, horizontal. Vertical is your relationship with God. Horizontal is your relationship with man. Pretty cool, huh? So with that, do not. We're going to go through all these. There's actually 613 seeds in a pomegranate. And pomegranates are very big over in Israel. I've actually had one. And by the way, I love fig newtons, but I actually had a fig there. It was kind of cool. Um, when we look at the Bible, it's in James chapter 2. It's in the New Testament. 
these two verses came to mind. He says, For if whoever keeps the whole law and yet stumbles at just one point is guilty of breaking all of them. For he who said, You shall not commit adultery, also said, You shall not murder. If you do not commit adultery, but you commit murder, you have become a lawbreaker. So, County Valley here, right? Let's just say that's good old Stevie here. And I actually went five over the speed limit because I rarely do. Well, actually, that's not true. But um, So you get pulled over by a cop, right? And he says, look, I've caught you doing uh, 15 over on the highway. Let me give you a ticket. Oh, you know, officer. And I start to plead with him and ask him for grace, right? But the speed limit says 65 miles an hour, and I'm going 75 or 80. I broke the law. I am now considered a lawbreaker. Now, whether the person that's sitting in jail or being tried as a murderer did something way more heinous than what I did, we're both lawbreakers. Do you see that? Uh, that's kind of like deep. I mean, it's like, oh my goodness, you put me in the same class as a murderer? That's what the Bible just said. It said that if you break the law, you are a lawbreaker. Right? A lawbreaker. Okay, so that kind of looks pretty bleak. But before we get into this, I am going to ask for some audience participation. All right? And I'm going to magically start moving my finger in different places. I'm going to start pointing at people. I need about a good four or five people to stand up here with me. Or as Laura's shrieking in her. She's like, oh, baby. <laughs> Son, you're one of them. Come on up here. Come on. We're going to have a little fun. Tim, since you've been already up here, you're already warmed up. Bunny, how about you? Ben, you want to come up? Okay. Hey, you know what? Bring Vicky up here, Tim. We'll make it complete. Uh, come on. You're always, you're always in the limelight. Come on. Okay? Let's do, let's, let's do this thing. You, you're laughing back there? I'll pull you up too. Okay? All right? Yeah, right? Yeah, she, she, she's very fascinating. One, two, three. Okay, so five. All right. So we're going to set up a, a, a kind of like a, a mock department store. Okay? Let's call it Walmart. <laughs> All right? Um, let's see. I'm going to have, let's make Seth a scapegoat. All right? You're going to be my scapegoat. I'm going to have, let's see, I'm going to have Bunny be over here, and you're going to be the cashier. Okay? Um, Vicki, you're going to be. <laughs> no, that's um, Let's see. You and Ben are going to be, we'll, we'll kind of, we'll, we'll keep you right over here, and let's see. Tim can be the man, the little bit be security. Perfect. You're going to go over in the corner. I'm sticking you in the corner, okay? So you guys are going to do something that's probably natural. All right? <laughs> you're, going to, you're going to be over here shopping, like kind of like, you know, looking around a little bit, checking some things out. And Seth is going to be over here as well. All right? So you're going to come over here, son. And so here's, here's what we're going to do. So Bunny's going to be the, you know, the cashier, all right? She's going to be the one to say, you know, Debit or credit, okay? So, um, and Big Bad Tim, he's just waiting to nail somebody, all right? Mm -hmm. So, he's the sheriff. So Seth is hanging out. There's like a shelf right over here. And he's got like, um, he's thinking it's, it's going to be Mother's Day. And he's got to get a gift for Mom. But he doesn't have any money. Now, you guys are hanging out, and you're doing the same thing. And you're kind of like looking around and maybe checking it out. That's right. Good, Nick, look at that. All right. So Seth is look, kind of looking over too, but he just saw something that he's going to take because he doesn't have money, but he wants to get something for his mom. Okay? And you guys all of a sudden saw something and start talking to each other. All right? Okay? Why don't you go anywhere? Come here. All right? So, so they start seeing, right? They start seeing that they saw something here. He's got it in his pocket, okay? Now, they're going to go up. Okay, you guys are going to come up here. You just happen to be up here getting, uh, check it out. checking out, okay? And, but you're, you're hanging out. He's got something. Let's just use this little m and thing that was here for a minute, all right? Kind of keep that out, like, a little bit visible, all right? 
So, Big Bad Tim's back there. He's kind of eyeing things down to see if anything's suspicious, but he doesn't see Seth doing that. But the cameras did. And somebody alerts you with your ear, earpiece, okay, and says, we got, we got one here. And they start describing who it is. So you guys are doing your transaction, okay, and you happen to see him, all right? And so he comes walking up, okay, but you turn your back and you continue with your transaction. But Tim, you see Seth and you say, wait a minute, okay? <laughs> And you throw him down. No, come back a little bit. Just like. And you you now approach Seth and you say, "Hey, you're a lawbreaker. Come on, you gotta you gotta you know, put your put your hands behind your back. All right, there you go. Okay. Now I want to show you something here. So so you're over here. Tim's gonna throw you around for a while. No, I'm kidding. Um, and he takes you off and says, "Okay, we can get the police involved." And you go off. And you guys, oh, we're getting to that. Okay? So here's the thing. We got we got these guys here, they're doing a transaction. Alright, now now the good part is for Bunny is she's innocent. Alright? I, I, I kind of made that happen, all right? These guys, you know, it's a different story. So here's the here's the cool part. Now Seth goes off to jail and tries to call dad, and I'm preaching and I'm not gonna bail him out. But anyway. Um so you have somebody here, now you've got all these players involved, right? Seth is trying to do something for his mom, but he's doing it the wrong way. He's not trusting God for provision, he's taking something that is not his. But the bleeding heart would say, the kid wants to do something for mom, look at her. She needs a gift. Okay? He broke the law, didn't he? He's a lawbreaker. Tim's the enforcer. That's his wrestling name, okay? So he's the enforcer. He don't care. He knows that he got the word and saw it on camera that Seth is a lawbreaker and he has to do something about it. He has to, to exercise the, the law, all right? But these two, they saw something that was wrong, but they didn't report it. Uh-huh. They didn't sing like a birdie, all right? They broke the law too. Because technically they're an accomplice to this because they witnessed it, but yet they told no one. They're lawbreakers. Especially you. Okay? So so here's the thing. So Bunny is innocent. She doesn't know anything that's going on because she's Bunny. Bunnies are innocent, you know? So she's she's there doing her thing and, and, and so forth. But these two saw something, but they turned their their a blind eye to it. So Seth goes off. He's now sentenced to jail, because that ain't bailing him out, all right? So he goes to jail, and he's sitting in jail. Let's try this. Seth, come here. Put this in front of you. Have a little fun, okay? All right? So he's behind, he's behind bars, like this, okay? All right? You know? No worries. No worries. Okay. So he's behind bars, right? Okay? And he's now a guard, so he's standing here going, mm hmm you ain't going nowhere, right? Okay, you guys thought you got away with it, all right? And right now you did, so I'm going to tell him. But anyway, um, so here he is. Seth is in jail. Guilty is charged of something that he knew he did. But all of a sudden, we're going to call Bunny Jesus now. Move over here, Bunny. Okay? She comes over and speaks to the, the guard, which is Tim, and says, I am going to do his sentence. Which means that you're going to take that stool. Right. You're going to take that stool, and Seth is going to be let go and set free. She didn't commit this crime, but she came over and freed him of his. That's what Jesus did for us. I know that was a little complicated, because that all, that all came off my head, okay? Which, you know me. But, do you guys see what just happened here? Okay? That's God. That's what he did for us on the cross. And I'm going to walk you through the Ten Commandments to, to understand what this really means. Thank you, guys. I'm going to leave her up there with me. 
kind of way to stole, right? And Tim, you did really good with it. Did that thing, man. Yeah, just give him a hand. Just give him a hand. Okay? You said you go to jail? I'm not bailing you out. But anyway. So, um, right. Continue to say it, yes. Um, no, great job, everybody. But, but, when we go back and we look at grace, and you look at the Ten Commandments, everybody has broken the Ten Commandments every day. Whether or not we admit it, that's a whole other avenue. But we've all broken them. This is just ten. If we live back in the days when Israel was under the old law, 613? <laughs> so check this out. The first commandment is, you shall have no other gods before me. Okay? No other gods. So here it is. Is God first in your life? Or is it the TV, the cell phone, Facebook, or even your own family? If it's not God first, you have broken commandment number one. See the, see the method here? If we don't have him first in our life, and we've made something second, third, fourth, or whatever, or I should say, we made God second, third, fourth, or whatever, and we put something else over it, we've broken the first commandment. That means if we're not reading our word, we're not praying, but yet we're interested in doing other things, we've already did. We put him second, third, fourth, or whatever. We decide not to come to church today because it's too nice outside. We've actually put the weather and our own pleasure over him. We don't come because, you know, we, we you know, it's, it's not exciting to you or whatever. What you've done is you said your own comfort trumps God. I mean, the list goes on. So you broke commandment number one. Commandment number two says you shall not make for yourself any graven image. This means that we shouldn't make a God to suit ourselves, either with our hands or our mind. One that is just okay with what we want God to be. And if you've broken that commandment, or you have, you've broken commandment number two, which means that if your vision or your, your idea of God is completely different, that suits you, that's exactly what's happened here. Case in point, if you believe that something really is something that you want to do, but yet God says, no, no, don't do it. But you say, well, God, God, I think God will allow that. You've actually done this. That means that, 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 let me try to bring it full circle here. Let's just say, I decide I want to have a whole pizza to myself today. Let's just say, where's Grace Boozer? She brings pizza again, okay? And I tell you guys, look, hands off, I'm doing it. Okay? But yet, I know that my body is a temple, and I'm not treating it right. But God will forgive me. What I have done is, I have made that pizza, believe it or not, an idol. I have said, I've justified my sin, and I said I'm doing it. You follow me now? I've justified in my heart, in my eyes, my sin, saying, I should do that. Regardless of what God's word says, I think that's okay. And I think God will go along with the program. And then go ahead and do it. Now, does that mean he'll forgive me? Yes with a position of the heart being right. But many times what we do is we justify what we're doing. We decide what God is going to like and what he isn't, not what he really says. You guys with me on that? Okay? So, commandment number three. You shall not take the, the name of the Lord your God in vain. Ever felt pain because you stuck your toe on the edge of a bed frame? That hurts. You see stars? You know what I'm talking about, guys? Or been so angry because somebody cut you off on the highway and, and used God's name in vain? Because you know you have to tell them about God and tell them to come to the whole community church at the same time. If you have, you broke commandment number three. And how many people say GD or JC? Quite often. They don't say, oh Buddha. They don't say, oh Vishnu. They don't say, oh Muhammad. They go right after the good old Christian God, right? So there's there's number three. Four, remember the Sabbath and keep it holy. Are you a workaholic and never take a break? Never rest? You just broke commandment number four. He commands us to take a day. He commands us. I know some of you who remember the blue laws, right? 
where Sundays were off limits. Very little was open. If you need to get your gas and your groceries, it had to be on Saturday or before, right? Or after on Monday. Otherwise, it was family time, it was church, it was make the meal, people came over and gathered, and that was Sunday. And now what we've done is we've said, hey, not only do we have the internet that can do things 24 hours, but we still have to have all these stores open on Sundays. For most of the day, by the way. Not just a couple hours, most of the day. And the, the, the thing that happened last year with the holidays was, I think Walmart wanted to be open on Thanksgiving. Did they? They did it. Really? Like, they need it. Like, like, like it's just that, you know, whatever you got to get is just that critical to go out on Thanksgiving and get it. Okay? Thank you, Lord. That's just you, Tim. Look at that. Print his lap. That's a promo video waiting right there. Dave, get the phone out, man. We can't, can't work this thing. He's like, ha, ah, there you go. Here's Grace. Yeah. That's so cool. God, you just made my day. That was awesome. So, you know, Walmart, you know, and he's surprised I didn't have that little smiley face so much from Walmart, you know, you know, save less or whatever you said. So, take a break, right? Roll back, yeah. Commitment number five, honor your mother or your father and mother. This is a tough one. Because it says, do you hate your parents for what they did to you? Rubber raggy. Zoinks. Do you disrespect them any, in, in, in any opportunity you get? You just broke commandment number five. Now, before everybody starts throwing darts at me, I had my issues with my father too. And for the longest time, I did not honor because of certain things that went on. Some of you, or maybe you know somebody, has gone through severe trauma that was caused by a parent. And it's very hard to forgive. Maybe you feel like a child that was ripped from you. Now, other kids had their little innocence, but yours is gone because you never had it, and you're angry. Many people walk around with that anger until the day they die. Why would God say this, even with that going on? There's still a respect level that he wants us to have, even for people who mistreat us. Look at the cross. Look at when Jesus was on it. And he said, and they were telling him, get down from the cross if you're God. Get yourself down. He says, Father, forgive them. They know not what they do. Isn't that something? That's a hard one. So if you're already in that cycle right now and you're still hating, unforgiving, or whatever, you're breaking number five every moment. We all are. You should not murder. Now this is an easy one, right? Well, I never killed anybody. You hear that common saying. But Jesus warned that if you get angry without cause with someone, we are in danger of judgment. If we hate our brother, God calls us a murderer. We can violate God's law by attitude and intent. So you may not pick up a weapon and actually strike somebody and take them out. But boy, oh boy, if you hate them in your heart, you're committing spiritual murder. It's not just the physical. You see, you see what's going on here? And, it, and you're all going to be like, wow, I came to church for this. Listen, there's good news with this, okay? I'm saying, though, that we have to come to a realization with ourselves to understand that we're not good enough to earn salvation. Does that make sense, guys? When you hear people say, well, I'm a good person, and they look at me and they go, you're or too. I'm like, no, I'm not. You may think you are. I'm not. Because I break these commandments every darn day. Every day, whether I do it willingly or unwillingly, somehow, some way, I stumble. And so I'm not perfect. And that's when God says, that's exactly right. I got you right where I want you, which means you depend on me. Everything in your life depends on me, not you, me. This church depends on him, not me. Whether these seats are filled or I got Tim sitting here playing with a balloon and he's the only one. It depends on him. Right? You guys with me? Our lives are depending on him. He wants that because he's the life creator. He's the one that gave us life. We didn't give each other life. It's him. 
Commandment number seven, you shall not commit adultery. Oh, another easy one. Well, if you never cheated on your spouse, you know, always a one woman, man person. But who of us can say that we are pure of heart? Jesus warned, if you have heard that is said, said to those of old, you shall not commit adultery. But I say to you that whoever looks at a woman to lust after her has already committed adultery with, with her in his heart. Now, of course, that goes the other way around too, ladies. All right? We do the same thing with men. If you mentally undress someone, you just broke commandment number seven. And I'm going to let that one just sit and percolate for a while. Okay? We live in a society where more and more it's just an afterthought. Pornography, ads, TV shows, there's very little left of the imagination. And and what I'm saying is, is that it may seem innocent, but everything that we see, everything that we view, has an effect on us. And so you don't feel like I'm putting the brunt on you. It worked a real number on me for many years. And it seemed like, you know, it was the cool thing to do. It was what the rite of passage was. And that's not what God wants. So every time we do something like this, we commit adultery. All of us have done it in some way, shape, or form. We may not tell anybody, but we've done it. You can't beat it. We live in a fallen world. You shall not steal. Have you ever taken something that belonged to someone else, irrespective of its value? How about those paper clips from your desk, or the, or the printer paper from the church? Or better yet, your tithe, not putting in the offering plate. You just broke commandment number eight. When I say you, I mean we, by the way. I'm not pointing this at people. This is all of us, okay? You look at it and you go, well, I never took it. Yeah, <laughs> if it's something small, we've still done it. But see, most people won't acknowledge that. This is that, ah, it's just a big deal, right? And it is a big deal then. You shall not bear false witness. Have you ever told a lie? And you're a liar. How many lies do you have to tell to be a liar? Just one. <laughs> If you have, you just broke commandment number nine. Now, there are times where people say, well, this was a little white lie. <laughs> so white makes it more, you know, like, okay. Go back to commandment number two, you know, God will be okay. There are times in the Bible where people have lied for the sake of God, and he never chastised them for it. When the, the, the little Hebrew babies were coming out and Pharaoh ordered them to be killed, the midwives that were supposed to be doing this said, oh, we couldn't do it because they came out so fast. They were lying. They were trying to save the life. It's all about the position of the heart is what God's looking at. You guys see this? I don't want everybody going like, you know, again, the ruler and everything else. Look at the heart of God in this. That's what I want you to see. I don't want you walking out of here with your head down going, oh, oh my God. okay? I want you to understand why God said what he said, not just don't do law, you know, don't break law, man break law, man punished. There's, there's a whole different ballgame going on here. He's searching hearts to see where are you? Where are you with me? Commandment number 10, you shall not cover. Do you look and secretly desire at your neighbor's house, car, or even spouse? Congratulations, you broke commandment number 10. So you look across the street and you see the person that has the Winnebago. The Winnebago. And you see this big, huge thing pulling out. And you're like, man, that would be really cool to have. Oh, and you see the riding lawnmower. And you have this 20-year-old push lawnmower from your grandfather who's already going on the glory. And this thing probably should do the same. And you're pushing it. And they're riding it. And you don't have the money to buy a good, nice riding lawnmower. You're pushing Grant's good old lawnmower. But secretly, you have this thing in your heart that goes, if that person would just come over a little bit more into my yard and just do the job for me, it would take him five seconds. But instead, oh no, I am pushing Grandpa's old lawnmower. While I'm watching the other ride lawnmower with their headphones on, Riding around, dumping the clippings nice and neat in a pile on the street, while mine are all scattered all over the place. 
Boy, it'd be nice to have that. Now, is it wrong to desire to have something in the right context? No. But what happens is, and I remember this like it was yesterday, when we moved to my grandfather's, my grandpa read leaves the old, old school way. We had a bed sheet, and that's what we would use to put the leaves on and then carry the bed sheet to the curb. Now, I have a wheelbarrow as well, and that didn't help much either. And our yard's huge, and we had tons of trees, for those of you who've been to my house. And I'm like, you've got to be kidding me, Lord. In the meantime, neighbors got the blower out. And I'm going, love you. Love you in Jesus' name. You know? And in the meantime, you know, Graham's like, hey, Stevie, you know, we got to get one more pile. I'm like, you know? And I, I, I mean, this went on. And then God had to check my heart and say, wait a minute, hold on. You're going to lead a church, but you're not willing to submit to the authority I've given you right now. And so my heart was not in the right place. Now, I ain't going to tell you that there's moments where I still have that, but now I have my son to go through those moments. So he goes out and does some stuff, and we try to do some things together as well, but... Here's what I'm saying, guys. It looks like we have a jail card, right? It looks like we're, we're, we're sentenced and punished. And for those of you who remember Monopoly, okay, the chance card, it's not the chance card. This card may be kept until needed or sold. Get out of jail free. Hallelujah. The owner of that game, man, when they made that, I could kiss them. All right. So it says, how do you get out of jail? Because Romans 3.23 says, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Everybody has blown it. Welcome to the everybody blown it club. But the difference is, do people acknowledge it? Pride says no. Humility says yes. Here's the great part. Grace comes walking in. Not Grace Breath, but she's here. But that grace. And it's actually Ephesians 2. For it is by grace you have been saved through faith, and not of your own doing. It is, a, it is the gift of God, not a result of works, so that no one may boast. Which means this. God is the only one to set you free. He created you. He put you in a fallen situation, one that you can't work yourself out of, which he knew perfectly well. And he gave us his best, Jesus Christ, to die on the cross and set us free because of it. But yet every day, like Christmas, God bless you, like Christmas time, we receive gifts, and yet we take those gifts, but when we get the ultimate gift put at us, we go, no, we don't really need that. We don't really need it. We don't need it. I'm okay. I'm all right. And God keeps saying, no, 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 I gave you Jesus. Believe in him. There's your gift. That gift will set you free and give you a life that may not be easy, but it's going to be fulfilling. And what happens? We just keep pushing it away. Guys, we can't earn it or deserve salvation. There's nobody good enough. Because when I hear people say, even who don't have faith, or they have different faiths, and they're like, well, I'm a good person. I said, define that for me. What's good enough? If I don't tell you how good is good, if I gave everybody a test here right now, and I just say it's 100 questions, but I didn't tell you what the prerequisite was to get an A. You have no idea. Let's just say you answer half of them right. And you go, I think I did pretty well. Well, my book, you failed. Who gets to make the rules? Me. Hey. But if you don't know the rules, you have no idea what you're up against. Right? It's the same thing with faith. If you're a Hindu and you're going to reincarnate over and over again, who decides where you end up? I'm going to be a cricket, you know? <laughs> I'm not gonna be, I'm not gonna be a cricket. So so you know what I mean? It's like you you know, who decides that? If you're a Buddhist, you kind of go away and try to do this, you know, until you achieve nir, you know nirvana type of thing. But how do you do that? Right speech, right this and that, you try to avoid things instead of going into it. And if you're if you're a Muslim, you have five key things you need to do every day for three times a day at least, 
And if you don't do them all the way, or maybe you forget a couple, you're on a scale. You're on a, on a weight scale. And your works is what's going to designate whether Allah lets you in or not. Okay? That's uncertainty. Jesus is the only one, the Christian faith is the only one that says, I died for you. You didn't die for me, I died for you. And so to wrap it up, I want you to understand this, guys. These sermons are not popular. These sermons are not something that you're going to walk out of here and go, he's like Joel Osteen. He tells me everything I want to hear. He's a neat little church. And that guy just, just puffs me up every time. But I also am not in the, in the camp of pointing fingers at people and saying, you better get no, no, no. That better start with me. Okay? This is for all of us. I don't get up here and say, what am I going to tell them today? Oh, yeah, I'm going to, you know. No. When God puts something on, on my heart to do, I have to look at this myself and go, oh, he's teaching me something again. And then he just wants everybody to have fun with sharing this. <laughs> I'm here to tell you guys that God loves each and every one of us. But the question is, since you can't save yourself, who's going to save you? The only one that can do it is Jesus Christ. He's the only one who was fully man and fully God that died for us. That's love. That's not like you believe in him or, 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 or else. That's, that's, he's saying, listen, yes, it's true, but look at the expression of Love that I have that I would do that for my creation. It's kind of weird if you think about it. That he would have to come down to that to save creation. Could he just push a button? Sure he could. But look at the, the, the dramatic love. You know, if I just pass this microphone to the set and just said, here, this is yours, it's no big deal. But if I said, look, somebody's going to have to take me out back and torture me in order for me to give you this, and I'm going to have to go through an intense amount of pain just because I love you, and guess what? That changes the whole ballgame, doesn't it? Wow, my dad would go through that much just to give me that blank. It's a whole different way of looking at it. And so my question to you, all of us is, do you know him? You may have been coming for a while. You may have had a relationship with my wife and I, and we love you, and we're glad you're here. But do you know Jesus? Do you believe in him? And if you don't, we're here to tell you that the greatest news you'll ever hear, you'll have wedding invitations, you'll have birthday parties to go to, but this one, the greatest invitation of all is the invitation to accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior. And we say it here, as you've heard many times, it's as simple as ABC. A, you've got to admit the truth about yourself, that your sins separate you from a holy God. That's the pride thing, they've taken the, the crown and removing it and saying, I'm not king or queen. But B, you got to believe that God did something about the problem by giving us Jesus Christ and by believing in him that he has taken our sins and thrown them out the window. C is committing and saying, today, I'm going to commit my life. I'm going to commit my life to following Jesus. Now you say to yourself, well, follow him. Well, I can't see him. I'm not talking that way. I'm talking about praying, reading, and letting him guide your life. And if you don't know him, and you're saying, well, I want to know him, and you just heard what I said, we're going to bow our heads in a moment, and I'm going to ask you to pray along with me. His grace is amazing. Because without it, there's judgment. And sad to say, there are many people that I think on the other side are going to be unpleasantly and pleasantly surprised at where they end up. And there's going to be a lot of people that we thought ended up in one area and maybe didn't because they didn't accept grace. They thought they were good enough on their own. So let's bow our heads. And like I said, if you've never accepted Christ as your Savior, you can right now. And you can pray something like this in your heart. And you can say, Father in heaven, thank you for loving me. Thank you for sending me Jesus. Lord, I, I, I 
need help? I need help. I admit, Lord, that I'm not perfect and I need your help. Forgive me of my sins. Forgive me of my sins. I, I believe in you, Jesus, as my Lord and Savior. And I commit my life right here, right now to you. And for those who already know you, who already know Jesus, I just pray, Lord, that you bless your people. I ask that you bless them and keep them, and may your face shine upon them. In Jesus' name, amen. Listen, guys, we have the war room here, which we have chairs already set up. We're going to have a couple people, we call prayer warriors, who are going to be here to pray with you. Um, I'm going to be through the double doors. We're going to have a little social time out there. I think we got Bunny made some really cool dessert type of thing to kind of celebrate. Three different cakes. Wow. Three different cakes. So, Grace, yes, Jenny. I asked you to say a prayer for Okay. Sure. Okay, so for those of you who didn't hear that, I saw it this morning. There was a, a young woman who was 31 years old that died on Route 55 this morning. I guess it was, it was in Millville? Okay, and what was her name? Danielle Shelley. And she passed away in a car accident. So we're going to take it just a quick moment and pray for the family, okay? Heavenly Father, we, we uh, come before you again, Lord. We don't always understand why these things happen, Lord, but we do know, Father, that this is not the only life that we live. And God, I just pray that you be with um, this young lady's family as they grieve and they mourn through this, Lord. Lord, in Jesus' name, I just pray for people in our congregation here that they went to school with, with her and, and just to touch their hearts right now. Lord, I pray that she knew you. I pray that she's in glory with you. And we ask, Lord, for healing with the people that are still here to deal with it. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, guys. Um, again, I'm going to be back there. And we have uh, the war rooms here. Love all of you. See you next week. But hang out. Let's, uh, you cannot let me have all that cake. It ain't happening, okay? So, all right. We got it with you.